you know, if you have somebody who's a bit anxious at a party, right, and you give them a couple of drinks of alcohol, mm -hmm. they're probably going to feel better. They're going to feel, like, oh, all that social anxiety I had is totally relieved. And if you did a six-week placebo-controlled trial with that intervention, you probably would have positive outcomes. And mm -hmm. you could see recommending that somebody continue to drink alcohol every day, you know, for the rest of their life because they want to prevent relapse of this condition, right? right? And then what happens if one day, you know, 15, 20 years from, from now, they want to stop? Of course, they're going to, you know, enter withdrawal state. Mm. And really, it's not that different because if we say that social anxiety is an alcohol deficiency, it's really the analogous proposal to, to what we're saying about the causes of, of depression and anxiety. It's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's, it's sort of, it's provocative, but there are also a lot of other pioneering think thinkers who have sort of begged the question, are these medications effective and are they safe? So, you know, in terms of efficacy, the model is the randomized placebo-controlled trial, almost always sponsored by a pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And Irving Kirsch has put out, he's a psychologist who's put out uh, two very important meta-analyses where he, through the Freedom of Information Act, he unearthed unpublished data. And he basically, you know, crunched the numbers in this really sophisticated way, and he demonstrated that there is no clinically significant difference between the effect of antidepressants and the effect of placebo. Hmm. And he said what happens in trials that gives us the impression that these medications are effective is that there is something called the active placebo effect, right? So we have the patients getting the sugar pill and then we have the patients getting the medication. The patients getting the medication are likely to have side effects, right? Headache, some gastrointestinal distress, you name it. And those patients have been conditioned, you know, as I said, maybe by societal beliefs, by direct-to-consumer advertising, maybe even by their doctor who really believes that this is going to be effective. They've been conditioned to think, you know, when they feel those side effects, oh, I'm in the treatment arm. I'm in the, the group that's actually getting the treatment. So my chemical imbalance is being resolved as we speak. Mm -hmm. And so that expectancy actually influences the positive outcome. And when you control for that fact, the, the clinical benefit disappears. And so we have a whole body of, of evidence based on, you know, the, sort of the manipulation of data really through, some, through not controlling for the active placebo effect. We have this problem of suppression of negative data. Again, an important study came out in 2008 analyzing all of the unpublished data, almost all of which was negative studies. Yeah. So it's like, you know, flipping a coin until you get heads sort of a thing.